Hey everyone, welcome to Techland TV. So today's new normal is everybody works from home, right? So the office has now been extended to the home office and everybody is relying heavily on collaboration services to continue business. That's how we talk to our customers, that's how we talk to our teammates, so on and so forth, right? And with that comes its own set of challenges, right? As an IT professional, we have to support our end users and our customers the best we can. And the challenge is that we cannot do that to the best of our abilities if we do not have complete visibility into the environment that we're supporting. So when everybody is working from home, that is a huge challenge to be able to identify exactly what the problem is when you cannot see it. So I thought about it and I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and share with everybody Cisco WebEx Control Hub. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you this product and show you how easy it is to troubleshoot, how quickly you can identify problems and also proactively uh, put a stop to any problem that may be coming down the pike before your users even realize there's a problem. This tool is amazing. It is one single dashboard. You just log into it and you'll have complete management of all your collaboration services. You can manage Cisco WebEx, you can manage Teams, calling, even hybrid services. The list goes on and on. And what's really cool about the dashboard in Control Hub is that you could have multiple dashboards uh, for your multiple administrators, right? So say administrator A has visibility into Cisco WebEx. So his dashboard is just for that. And administrator B has visibility into calling for this, you know, building over here. And you can do that. That way you can, you know, prioritize and limit who can access what and get visibility into which collaboration service. So that's really cool as well. So let me go ahead and jump right into it and show you how quickly you can troubleshoot your customers' environments when they are using their collaboration services with Cisco WebEx Control Hub. Here we are at the Control Hub dashboard. Before we jump into how to troubleshoot, I wanna quickly show you the overview of WebEx services. This is a great place to go just to get a general high-level overview of all your services to see if they are working. So if we click on the three dots, we can go ahead and say view status page. Here, we're gonna get a high level look of all the WebEx status information on meetings, teams, control hub, hybrid services, contact center, so on and so forth. So you can get an idea if these are actually in operational state or if they're down prior to specific troubleshooting. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we begin troubleshooting. We go to the troubleshooting tab here on the left-hand side. And when we're here, we have the option of doing a meeting search, which is basically gonna give us the ability to find meetings that have already ended, or we can do a live meeting search. Now with live meeting, it's really cool because you can actually join that live meeting and experience what the people are going through and kind of give you a real time view into the actual meeting to see how it's behaving and to help you troubleshoot. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and look at meeting search and we can search either by email meeting number, conference ID, or device name. And you can choose here in the calendar the time frame that the meeting actually took place. So you can go ahead and filter and find those. I'm gonna go ahead and type in the email address of the person that called in with the trouble ticket and do a search. Here we get a list of all the meetings that have ended from this particular user. And the one that he's interested in is this last one here. So we will go ahead and click on that meeting and it's gonna go ahead and open up for us and give us a view into the experience. So what I wanna show you is on the left-hand side, you have a list of all the people that were in that meeting. And on the right-hand side, you get your meeting details, which call out the meeting number, your conference ID, uh, how many people are in it, what type of meeting it was. And you also have a legend down here at the bottom right that calls out the different indicators, signal qualities, join meeting time and exit meeting. What I wanna show you in the legend is that if you hover over the information button, it gives you the definition of what they are calling 
uh, host or sharing or change in this particular example. The signal quality being good, fair, and poor. What does that mean exactly, right? So good is defined as anything between four and five. Uh, poor is anything greater than 5% packet loss so on and so forth, right? So if we hover over those informational icons, it'll give us the definition of what they consider good, fair, poor. Let's go ahead and click on Forrest. He called in and said that he was experiencing some problems. So let's take a look at the meeting quality, right? We have our audio quality, we have video quality, we have the share quality, CPU usage, and memory usage that we could review. So if we scroll back up to the top, I want to bring to your attention on the right hand side, we have a box that has a list of all the equipment and networks that uh, relate to Forest's experience. So we can see that Forest is using WebEx meetings and it's called out the actual version number. We know the platform that Forest is on, it's Windows 10, right? And he joined from Chrome. The one thing I want to call out is the connection type because here it's Ethernet. It could be Wi-Fi. So it just depends on how your user is actually connecting into the WebEx meeting. So if it's Wi-Fi, that could be problematic, right? It's not the most stable connection type. So Ethernet is something that we want to look for. Just my two cents, right? And in here, you also get the IP address, so on and so forth. But down at the bottom of this box, you have the microphone, the speaker, and the camera being called out. So now we know the actual hardware that Forrest is using, and that can help us with our troubleshooting as well. So let's take a look at the experience. What we're gonna look for here is any type of spikes or drops, right? And here we can see under packet loss for audio that we had a spike. So if we hover over it, we're gonna get an idea that the packet loss was 34% at 5.51 in the morning, right? Another example could be video quality. We have packet loss, a spike here, that's telling us that we had 73.05% packet loss. Right, we have some drops in our media bit rate, right? You know, telling us what that looks like, and the same thing with our frame rate. We had some drops, right? So, this is good information that can help us troubleshoot. We can also find out more about the CPU usage and the memory usage of the device this person is using. So, we're going to look for spikes as well with system CPU. And here, if we hover over one of the spikes, we can see that the system CPU is actually utilizing 100%. So what's happening on that device, right? Um, I'm just gonna assume it's a laptop for this example. What's happening on this laptop that the CPU is running at 100%? Is there a, a, an active antivirus scan happening at this time? Did uh, other applications happen to be running at this time, right? We don't know, but we're gonna look into it and find out because this is a really big clue that would explain why the experience was poor, right? And we have the same type of concept with memory usage. We just basically look for something that looks out of the normal and we hover over it and get those statistics. Now, what I wanna show you in troubleshooting also, that's kinda of cool, is the alerts. What's really cool with alerts is that you can be proactive. Alerts will send you uh, alerts based on thresholds that you define for very specific people. So let me show you what I mean. If we click on, for example, the live meetings network quality alert, we see here that there's a list of users called out. These users are the people that you put in there and you define as very important, right? Maybe they're your executives, maybe they are your C-levels, whoever the case may be, right? They are important to you and you wanna know in advance before they call you that they're experiencing some kind of problem. So you put those email addresses of those people in there. Then you scroll down and you start building your thresholds, right? What are the rules gonna be? For audio, what's my acceptable latency, right? If it's anything over 500 milliseconds, I wanna know about it, right? Video, same thing, what's my jitter? What's my packet loss acceptability? I build my threshold, I call out the users that I want it to monitor, and then I put in my email address or the email address of other administrators that should be getting the alert sent to them. So this is really cool way for you to be proactive and know what's going on within your organization prior to getting that phone call. The next thing I wanna show you is analytics. Now within the analytics portion, uh, it does take a little bit of time to load because the data is so big. So you gotta be a little patient for this part. Uh, I'll try to fast forward the video so you don't have to wait for it. 
But within analytics, you're basically going to get, oh, look, it came right up. That wasn't so bad. Usually it's longer. So within the analytics, you go ahead and get your um, adoption perspective, right? That's really what you're looking at here is usability. How many people are actually using the product? What are they using it for? What are they doing with it? When are they using it? Where are they located when they are using it? All of these statistics, right, are gonna be brought to you in a graphical representation to make it easy for you to understand the actual adoption of the collaboration services that you have purchased. So we're gonna take a look at meetings. You can, of course, look at messaging and calling and other services and devices, but in this example, we're gonna focus on meetings, right? We can see the total meetings, we can see total video meetings, total meeting minutes, total unique hosts, and total participants. In the middle of the screen, we have engagement, quality, and audio. We're gonna look at engagement and what that means. That's basically telling us the number of people that are actually using our WebEx product, right? And we can do a graphical representation by daily, weekly, or monthly. And we can also take a look here on the right-hand side, the join method, right? Did they join using WebEx meeting client? Or was it Teams? Or was it some cloud video device? How did they actually join that meeting, right? And where were they when they joined that meeting? So usage by location. You know, what country were they in? You know, which country uses the meetings the most, right? That's what this one is telling us. And in this example, we can see United States really loves to use meetings. So uh, total video meetings is the green line that we notice in this bar, and total meetings is the yellow line that we notice in this bar. So now we get an idea on these specific days, because this is a daily graph, we get to see how many total videos and how many total meetings were actually in use. We can also get usage by activity on the right-hand side. It's gonna show us the number of people using video versus sharing, right? And down at the bottom, we have our top 10 meetings by meeting minutes and hosts and locations. So we can just kind of get an overview of what's happening here. So let's go ahead and take a look at quality. And in quality, you're gonna see the average join time. Again, the uh, graphs here are gonna represent daily, weekly, or monthly. You can click on whichever one you like and get the analytics for that. In these examples, I'm just gonna stick with daily. So what I wanna point out here in the average join time is the red line represents the join time that we would like to see, right? This is our goal. We want them to be able to join this quickly. And the blue line represents the actual join time in seconds. So the reality, how long did it really take that person to get on, right? So if we hover over the red line, which is our goal, it says that we would like to see them join within 10 seconds, right? And if we hover over the blue line here, we get the actual, which was 4.59 seconds, right? So it was even faster than what we wanted, which is awesome. So that kind of gives us a perspective of what's going on. And again, average join time by location on the right-hand side. And if we scroll down, we get our VoIP quality and VoIP quality by location. And it's rather simple. Red is, is above threshold and blue is good. So we wanna see the good, right? But if there is anything red, we wanna know about that too. That's what's gonna help us troubleshoot these problems. If you scroll down to the bottom, now you're gonna see the participant details. Here, you can get the entire view, which is what we have, or if you click on the magnifying glass, you can type in a specific meeting number and it will filter for that uh, particular meeting number only and show you the statistics. So here, we can gather the meeting name, the user's name, the dates, we can see the start and end times, we can see the client IP addresses, right, so on and so forth, and if we scroll over to the left, we get a few more columns that call out packet loss and jo uh, join meeting second time and things of that nature. So you get the, the overall high level view of the statistics behind a meeting. Now, if we scroll back to the top, lastly, we're gonna take a look at audio. And within audio, in this example, it's calling out voice over IP, right? These are the analytics for VoIP. And again, we can see here that the audio usage is at 100%, so it is being used. And on a daily view, we see the high point being, you know, November 13, that there was quite a few uh, VoIP users during that time. And, if, and again, with any of this, if you just hover over it with your mouse, 
you're gonna get more information, a little pop-up box comes out, right? And you can scroll down and get additional participant details. So this is a high level, quick and dirty overview of how you can troubleshoot within Control Hub. I hope this was enjoyable for you. I hope it was educational. And please come back and watch some more of my videos. I'm gonna be uh, putting out a whole bunch more here as time allows. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.